Hi, I'm Molly. And I'm Jamie, and this is our From the Pasture with Hired Hand podcast. As the owners of Hired Hand website software, we've been developing websites and creating internet marketing strategies for livestock breeders for the past 10 years. The majority of our customers are involved in the breeding of registered animals, such as Texas longhorns, Highland cattle, horses, and white-tailed deer, where the pedigrees are very important. The From the Pasture with Hired Hand podcast examines many of the differences in raising pedigreed livestock for maximum profit. Join us and learn what we're covering today. Today, we're here with Pam Kinsel-Hughes and Russell Freeman, both from the ITLA, and we are going to talk about the 2024 ITLA Champion Show. Um, could each of you introduce yourselves for those people who may not know you? Yeah, I'm Russell Freeman. I'm uh, the current president of uh, ITLA. I am Pam Kinsel-Hughes, and I am the office manager at ITLA. And both of you individually have Longhorns on your own, right? Correct. Yes. I've been in the show industry for about 22 years now. Um, I've been showing since I was 12 years old. Um, so, yeah, we live here in Stephenville, Texas. Russell, how about you? How long have you had Longhorns? I've only owned Longhorns since 2014, but I grew up in uh, some neighbor kids had Longhorns. And, and uh, so I have some of the old pedigrees, the names are familiar because the kids I went to school with were we're talking about those, so, but I've only owned them for 14 or since 2014, for 10 years. So lots of experience between the two of you. Somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> I've been ranching a long time and, uh, and cattle in general, I've learned how to not kill them all. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> as, as Pam can attest to, we've, we've learned several ways to keep one alive. So. Yes. Yes. I've called him many a night saying, I have a cow struggling. Help me. What do I do? <laughs> oh, well, that's good that you guys have each other to lean on for those types of questions. Okay. So let's go ahead and we'll get started about the ITLA championship show. I know the sale that you all have is a little bit different, I guess, from the um, traditional sale that we are all used to throughout the year. Uh, what is your goal with the sale that you have? This is a fundraiser sale. All the heifers are donated. Proceeds go to help the ITLA and keep our expenses down and keep our office and running. Um, we also do some scholarships, things with it, but it's it's different because every heifer here is donated and all the money proceeds go to what we consider a good cause. Okay, so let's talk about the schedule of events. There are a lot of things that are happening in the um, four days of this show. So we'll start with Wednesday. Can you give us a rundown of what happens on Wednesday? Sam, why don't you go through the schedule a little bit? Sure. So Wednesday is basically a check-in day. Um, you can kind of come as you want. You don't have to be there at a specific time. Just sit there when you can and hang out for a day, relax after long travels. And that's also when we start our horn measuring contest. We are bringing back Call of the Horns. This was an event done many years ago. Um, I remember the old timers back in my day when I was a kid. I remember them out there. They all volunteered to go and measure these cows for a contest. And it was fun to watch. And so we are bringing that back this year. We've got a good number of entries so far. I think with it being the first year back, it has had its challenges. But hopefully we can only get better from here. It does look to be a good event for the first year, so we can't complain about that. Who are you having for the uh, measurement team? That will be our back crew guys, which is Donnie Taylor, and his crew will be handling all the moving of the cattle and the measuring and all that. And then we also met- have uh, Matt Marty's Total Horn Noble measurement tool, too. Nice. And you mentioned Donnie Taylor. Is he the back crew for the whole entire weekend if somebody needs to get in contact with him? Yes. Yes, Yes, he is. So that is Wednesday, cattle arriving and call of the horn. The contest starts. What about Thursday? What happens Thursday morning? Thursday morning, we'll start with the non-haltered show. Uh, Preston Berkeley is the judge for that. He's a newer judge, um, but he's shown to be very good. And then Thursday is also Halloween, so we are going all out this year and doing a costume contest. We used to call it a seer costume contest where you would dress up with your seer 
but it doesn't have to be just a spear. You can do your cow, you can do your bull, whatever you feel comfortable dressing up. How many um, contestants do you usually have for your costume? We contest? haven't done this in we haven't done this in many years either. Um, okay. This I remember doing this when I was a kid, and so we wanted to bring it back, especially being on Halloween. So we're hoping for a ton of entries. Uh, you can sign up at check in. So whenever you get there, come find me at check in, and we will get you signed up to do that costume contest. Uh, we have five categories, best overall costume, funniest costume, most creative, cutest, and best group. And then we'll also have a stall decorating contest, Halloween theme. So who can decorate their tie-out spaces with their animals the best? Who do you have judging um, those contests? We do not have one yet. <laughs> we will have one when right. we get there. <laughs> to, to be determined. There we go. There's still time to figure that out. Yes. And then at 2 p.m., I think the sale starts. Is that right? Yes. The heifer sale starts at 2 p.m. Um, we'll be at, in Lufkin, Texas at the Angelina County Expo Center. We will be live on higher hand, and we can probably find someone to haul them back to you if you need. And if somebody needs to get a hold of, um, has questions about any of the animals in the sale, who should they contact? Feel free to contact me. Um, text is better because um, it's easier to get back to usually. But my phone number is 254-485-4269. Anybody's more than welcome to reach out to me with any questions. I'm happy to help. Okay. And what about the auctioneer and pedigree reader? Who did you have this year? We have uh, our Dan auctioneer. Huntington. And uh, Dan Huntington's doing the auctioneer, and Gary Lake's doing the pedigree reading. Okay. Gary's very entertaining. He's, <laughs> he's different than, than Dan's normal guy, so it'll be a little bit, a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah. Gary's always fun um, to listen to when he gets on the mic. You never know what's, what he's going to talk about. That's correct. Makes it exciting. <laughs> he does definitely keep it exciting. So let's talk about the consigners um, for the animals that are in your sale. We've had some very generous uh, uh, ranches that and breeders that have stepped up, really stepped up and made some, um, brought some, I guess in my mind, some top pedigree cattle. Some of these you don't see in, in traditional sales. There's a drag iron daughter, which um, drag iron daughters don't usually come up. Uh, and sales very often. There's a real safari son daughter. Um, there haven't been very many of those sold. The breeders have really stepped up and done a nice job of, of donating some really good cattle. We're excited about it. So out of all the, I think there's, how many con consignments do you have in the sale? Is there 12, I believe? 12. I think yes, so. we have 12. Yep. Um, do you have any updates on any scratches or any subs for those 12 or are the original 12? We're still good to go with them. Right now, we're still good to go with the 12. I haven't heard of anything, unless Pam's heard something. Nope. I believe they're all still good to go. Okay. Let's move on now, and we'll talk more about the consignments that um, you have in the sale. Typically, at this point, I like to play a little game with people and either have them try to guess the top five, or we have another game that we've been playing, and it's called Catalog Roulette, where I will scroll through the catalog and click on a lot and uh, you all could tell me more about it. Are you up for either one of those games? I'd like to find a catalog. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Which one do you want to play? Do you want to do the roulette or do you want to try to guess the top five? We can guess the top five. Okay. Yeah, I could, I could probably do that. Okay. What's your first guess? For like the highest seller? Um, no, for, um, I'm sorry, the top five viewed so far. Oh, top five viewed so far. Yeah. Um, yep. definitely, probably number one is going to be Dragon Laugh, I would think. Yeah, very good guess. Yep. She, the lot seven, Dragon Laugh is so far the top viewed. Uh, do you have any information or anything you want to talk about with her? She comes from the, um, Dickinson's breeding and, you know, they don't sell stuff in sales very often or ever. So this is one of the... Uh, only chances to get a drag iron daughter out of some of Joel's good cows 
that will be at a public auction. You won't have to negotiate with them. And you know how Joel and Daryl are tough negotiators. So this is your one chance to get around those guys and still get their genetics. So I'd say that's a pretty good deal. Yep. What are your guesses for the other four? I think the cut and Dixie's got to be in the top five. Yep. She is. She is the third most viewed. What do you know about her? Oh, she's a cut and dried daughter and, you know, that bull was the heaviest bull at the Horn Showcase and cut and dried um, solid genetics and big bodies. And so far, they've made good cows. So I, I think that's a popular thing. Yep. You have three left. Any other guesses? Rarely Fast Safari. Wow, you guys are good. This is the <laughs> second most viewed. Oh, look at that. <laughs> uh, she's, she's my heifer. She's a real safari yeah. daughter. Uh, black and white, fancy, flashy. She's also Matt Smarty's pick of my heifers. Um, he came up here and he's found her on my website and uh, wanted to know where she was at. I said, well, I'll just put her in the sale so he could buy her. So yeah, uh, she comes out of the uh, just as fast, which is an over 82 inch cow that actually came from Daryl's, but uh, Boland's had her for a while and I bought her from Boland's. A pretty speckled brindle, uh, classic horn, swoop horn deal so this uh heifer she doesn't look like she's going to grow a lot of horn right now but if you look at it you can tell it's going to roll over and by the time she's five or six she's going to be that cool look that everybody likes that flat twisty horns so people say that the twisty horns are gone but i think you'll whoever buys this heifer will find it in a couple of years it'll be there yeah for sure okay two left jm5 touch of money Wow, Pam, you're on a roll today. That's number four. <laughs> hey, look at that. <laughs> you know anything about this heifer? Yeah, she is a tank of a heifer. She's gorgeous. She's actually one I'm eyeing, so nobody else go look at her because I want it. <laughs> She's a colluder daughter, and um, not many of those have been sold. So I am very excited to see her in person week. And we should mention that she is donated by Jeremy Lindsay McIntyre with McIntyre Farms. Yes, they have been so gracious to donate her. She's gorgeous. All right, the last one, the fifth most most viewed. Can you get it? Oh, that's tough. I'm gonna go with Iron Breeze, just because the irons. Uh, figured it must be something with drag, drag iron, and maybe people are looking at that. Um, that one is not the, the fifth most viewed, but you're welcome to go ahead and talk about her. I'll let Pam guess the fifth one. Four C ring tide. Nope, not her either. But again, you're welcome <gasps> to go ahead and talk about talk about her as well. <laughs> well. That one was donated by Cold Copper. She's a really cool copper. Any other guesses? Um, is it? VVF Rodeo Rider. That's it. That's the fifth most viewed. Oh, she's cool too. She's out of uh, her, her sire is really cool, and they have not sold any, I think, heifers out of him yet. So we were very lucky for Valley View to donate her to us. We really appreciate that. Do you sometimes feel like you're the only one who doesn't have it all figured out? Rural life could be isolating, but it doesn't have to be. Welcome to Ag's Most Okayest Farm Girls, the podcast for women who are craving connection, laughter, solidarity, camaraderie, and just overall encouragement in your everyday life and dreams. Each week, your hosts, Annalise, that's me, and Courtney will cover topics such as farm life, mom life, making money online, side hustles, hobbies, sharing on social media, jobs off the farm, and so much more. Us rural gals need to stick together, so saddle up for some fun, real, and unsolicited advice and and stories from our everyday farm lives. Grab a drink. We're Egg's Most Okayest Farm Girls, and we're here to help. Listen wherever you find podcasts. From the Pasture by Hired Hand is presented by R3 Hilltop Ranch. Located in Chilton, Texas, R3 Hilltop Ranch has been breeding registered Texas Longhorns since 2006. What began as three heifers has grown into our current herd, which you can explore on our website at r3hilltop.com. We're passionate about loud colors, longhorns, and docile temperaments. 
but it's the easy-keeping, low-maintenance traits of Texas Longhorns that initially attracted us and continue to drive our herd growth. In addition to livestock, we proudly offer certified Longhorn beef products. Visit r3hilltop.com forward slash beef to learn more. Thank you for listening and enjoy exploring our ranch online at r3hilltop.com. So that wraps up the sale. That is again at 2 p.m. on Thursday. Uh, after the sale, it looks like you're going to have the championship futurity. Uh, how many classes do you have for the futurity? 17 classes. We, and we recently added the uh, older female classes that some breeders called and demanded that. So we uh, had some late ads and I think Pam did a good job of getting a message out. We have seven bull classes and 10 female classes. Okay. And how many entries do you have total? I think there's over 90 so far. Nice. That's a, that's a good size for charity. Who did you um, select for the judges? Um, we have Joel Dowling, uh, Keith Berkeley, um, who um, is from Virginia, Matt Marty, Granis Tinkus, and John Moxley. So we try to spread out the... There's a, few, there's a few kind of local guys and then some guys from back east. So I think they'll do a good job. Yeah, it sounds like they'll be a good panel of judges. And then no day is complete with Halloween, with it being Halloween. Um, I think it looks like you're going to finish out the day with some trick-or-treating. Yes, we're asking anybody that would like to participate to set up a little trick-or-treat station during, after, before, whenever the futurity so the kids can, you know, trick or treat. And then some of the kids will be going out in the evening, I think, around Lufkin and trick or treating there as well with their parents. Um, but we wanted to kind of spoil them at, at the show as well. And I'm assuming you're encouraging all the kids to, to dress up for the trick or treating as well? Yes, dress up. <clears throat> and I think uh, y'all will bring bringing some bags. Is that right? Yep. 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 Yeah. We plan on bringing we'll some bags. Some- some trick-or-treat bags. We'll definitely have several little trick-or-treat spots for the kids. They can dress up, have fun, eat some candy, get all sugared up, and then go home and sugar crash. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, let's move on to Friday. Um, what are you going to start with on Friday? Friday starts the Haltered Show, uh, judged by Liz hunsbury Foshim, And we have over 140 entries, so that's going to be a great show to watch. Yeah, and the haltered show starts at 8.30? Yes. And then what takes place after the haltered show is over? After the haltered show, we move into our Queen Court contest interviews. Uh, we have the ITLA Queen's Court, and um, we those awards have been donated. The crowns have been donated by Larry and Heather Lee Smith. Heather Lee Smith is the one that also puts on the event. Um, so she's, they've been so gracious the past few years in doing this. Um, and then the Sasset sashes have been donated by Valley View Farms and Mimi's Inc. And they actually produce those and donate those to us. So uh, we're very grateful for that. <clears throat> Are you able to tell us who you have on the court? We do have quite a few. But we still have entries open, so we could have more entries by the time it gets there. Okay. And there's three there's three uh, ages of those, isn't there, Pam? Yes, there is the ITLA Queen, ITLA Princess, and ITLA Little Miss. Also, while she's looking that up, they're having a John P. Hodges scholarship this year. Um, we have two $1,000 scholarships that we're giving away that's a speech contest that um, kids can enter up to when we uh, start the start the show. So if you have any kids looking for scholarships um, that can show up and give a speech. Um, the scholarship is something separate. They have to fill out an essay and send it in to us by October 25th. And then those will be sent off and judged by um, professors at a college. And then that's how we give away the John P. Hodges scholarship. We do have 
a speech contest, but that award is Buckles, donated by Bull and Barrel Longhorns, Russ Thompson and Anita Thompson. So what's the topic of those, um, of the thesis or the, does it matter what they're, what they're writing about? That's <clears throat> yes. John P. Hodges scholarship. The topic is what the Texas Longhorn industry means to you and how it has helped you with your future plans and goals. And we need a copy of your current transcript and two letters of recommendation and your essay. And then you can send that in. The application is on itla.com on the homepage. So you can print that off, fill it out, and send all the information in to staff at itla.com. Well, that's a great way for kids to get additional money for college. That's nice that they're doing that. Yeah, and the Queen Contest um, this year, we have a $1,000 scholarship for the ITLA Queen winner uh, for the oldest age division, donated by the Longhorn Posse affiliate. I'm really trying to push more girls to get into it. Uh, it's a great way to promote the breed and get out there. And then you also get scholarships, so you can't beat that. The entries I do have right now, it's uh, Evie Westmoreland, Evie Savio, Eve Hatler, Evelyn Miner, and Alice Miner are the ones I have so far. Nice. And if I remember right from past years, when they win, there's things that they have to do throughout the year that they reign. Is that correct? Yes. So they go to different events where they're crown and sash. They usually help out a lot at the shows, like handing out awards, things like that. We really love it when the girls actually get more involved and go out to, you know, try to promote the breed and share pictures and social media and all that. I remember when uh, Leah Grove yeah. was reigning for that year. She was she was active. She was going every, everywhere. Every sale that they went to, she had her crown and sash on and was sure to talk to everyone about it. It was cute. Yeah, she did so good. She did this year we had uh, Camilla Westmoreland, Kenley Husky, and Baylor Marty, and all three of them did mm -hmm. such a wonderful job. Um, yep. So, yeah, they did really great this year. Hey, if you love From the Pasture with Hired Hand, why not go check out my podcast, The Big Iron Podcast with Andrew Shigori, where we dive into the world of registered Texas Longhorns and what it means to be an agriculture entrepreneur in the modern world. With a little southern flair, of course. Find the Big Iron Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Looking for top quality longhorns and a taste of true Texas spirit? Look no further than Cantera Cattle Company. Our passion for longhorns shines at Old Gringo Ranch, where tradition meets excellence. Visit us online at canteracattlecompany.com and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok for the latest updates and ranch life fun. Ready to experience it yourself? Schedule your visit by emailing canterracattle at gmail.com. Remember, God is great, longhorns are good, and life is crazy. Well, let's talk about the youth speech contest. Um, what are the requirements for those speeches? Between uh, two minutes and six minutes in length, and the uh, theme of the speech is how to best add value to your Texas Longhorn Herd. For these, you get a buckle. And the buckle's been donated by Bull and Barrel Longhorns. And we need the speeches turned in at check-in. So. Is there an age range for the speeches? There are four age divisions. Uh, Pee Wee and Junior are combined. And then we have intermediate and teen, and then senior and veteran. Those are by the showmanship age groups. Okay. And then there are also a couple other contests you have going on as well at the same time, right? Yes. So we also have an arts, arts and crafts contest. Uh, the theme this year is Ranch Life. Um, it's also by, this one has uh, three age categories. Um, and your age is as of January 1st. Junior and intermediate are together. Teen is separate and senior and veteran. Any of the kids can compete even if they won in the same age division last year. That's totally fine. Uh, one entry per exhibitor. Um, and it has to have been made since the previous ITLA champ show. So if this 
previous calendar year. It can be something you did three years ago. There will be no displays such as easels or anything. So if you want your project to stand up on the table, um, you'll need to provide that. And then you'll turn that in at time of check-in, uh, no later than Friday at 5 p.m. And on the back of it, make sure you put a label with your name and what age division you're in. And we also have a photography contest. Uh, it needs to be a 8 by 10 picture. And the same, same rules. The theme is ranch life. Has to have been done in the past calendar year. And one per exhibitor. Uh, put your name on the back. And if you want it to stand up, then it needs, you need to provide an easel or stand or frame or what, however you want to do it. Do you have the same judges for all three of these contests or are they different judges? This speech will have judges that Russ Thompson picks. Um, they donate the buckles. They kind of supervise that specifically. So I'm not sure on the judges that he's picked yet. Okay. Um, and then the, the arts and photography, we usually, like last year, we got our photographer to actually go and judge. Um, so I was thinking about doing that again this year is have, you know, the artsy person go and judge him. He doesn't know it yet, but Gerald, <laughs> you might be a judge for this. <laughs> she does now, huh? <laughs> she does now. <laughs> so that all starts at 2.30. Moving on to 3 o'clock, it looks like there's a seminar. What is the topic and who is the guest? Um, Joel Dowling um, has given a talk on Longhorn Beef. He's done a great job of uh, marketing Longhorn Beef in, in his area. Um, He's tried a lot of things and, and figured out some things, and he's going to be talking about, you know, for those that are, they can't all be horned and they don't all live forever. So if you have to turn them into beef, how to best market that. And for those people that haven't found him on TikTok yet, I encourage you to go out and check out his uh, TikTok page. He's pretty active on there. Yeah. and um, He's great. He does a good job. Yeah. Okay, so that seminar is at 3. What do you have going on at 4.30? That is when the youth team judging starts. The youth team judging is similar. You'll sign up at check-in. Uh, this is another thing we're bringing back that we did when I was a kid in youth. And uh, it was a lot of fun, and it taught us so much. So I'm really hoping that the kids can benefit a lot from this. Um, so when you sign up, uh, it will be one kid from each age division, so a total of five per team. There will be a demonstration at the beginning uh, by Danielle Marchand and Justin Sabio. They will then, once they kind of teach the kids what they're looking for, what they judge based on, you know, different body types, everything like that, then they will move on into the actual contest part of it where the teams will judge the cattle. They will then give their reasons as to why they and how they did. Um, and then Danielle and Justin will award the winners. The awards were donated by Danielle Marchand as well, so thank you for that. And then it looks like after that, there's a youth showmanship clinic and a pizza party. The best part. <laughs> yep. Uh, Dr. June Korn is going to be talking about uh, showmanship. Um, she's a... Um, been a judge for, I think she judges dogs and and um, cattle. So she's very experienced in judging and, and how to handle yourself and your livestock in the arena. Um, we're looking forward to having her give us some good pointers. And is there a deadline for the kids to sign up for this clinic? They don't even need to sign up for the clinic. Use team judging, they'll need to sign up at check-in. Um, but the showmanship clinic, we want all the kids to attend that want to. They don't need to sign up. They can just okay. come. Nice. So that ends the day on Friday. Now let's move on to Saturday. What do you have first thing in the morning? Uh, we're hoping so they don't forget everything right away. We're having the youth showmanship. I have kids that struggle with learning things and taking tests the next day. So we're hoping that this goes well. Uh, and then we go right. We start with the showmanship and then go right into the youth show. When does that start? 
believe that's at eight thirty or nine. How many um, participants or entries do you have for the youth show? Right now we have 140 entries. Okay. And uh, uh, Dr. June Korn is going to be judging the youth show as well, so the kids can kind of get familiar with her and what her expectations are the night before, and then she'll be the judge the next day. And then at 2 o'clock, it looks like there's another seminar. What is the topic for this seminar? Uh, Dr. Sabio, Justin Sabio, is going to be talking about cattle reproduction. Uh, he's not very long ago, he started a embryo and uh, semen collection and AI company. So he's he should be up to date on all the new protocols and whatever it takes for uh, cattle reproduction. He'll be talking about that at 2 o'clock. Okay. And then at 4 o'clock, looks like there's a bunch of different meetings that you have starting at 4 this is where the mundane starts. Uh, we start with a general membership meeting, uh, board of directors meeting, uh, Phillies president meeting. Um, we'll have that um, a little more scheduled out. But the, and then at the end of that, we'll have uh, the awards banquet. To liven it up in the middle, we'll have the Queen's Court Fashion Show. That Last year, that was real, real fun for all the kids. And Mrs. Heatherly does a nice job with putting all that together. And then maybe you finish out the weekend with the awards banquet. That's correct. We have a lot planned for that, actually, this year. We have a live auction um, at banquet with several items that are going to be really cool. Um, so we have a PNC shoot donated by PNC. This always does really well. This is a good time to get it. I got I got the PNC last year. <laughs> I didn't steal it. You bid me up. <laughs> <laughs> and then we also have a ITLA engraved rifle donated by Mr. Tim McCreary with T Rod Longhorns. It is a beautiful rifle, and he was so gracious to donate to our Lone Star Classic, and then again for this show. So. We greatly, greatly appreciate him. Um, and then his wife, Lois McCreary, she painted a gorgeous custom um, Longhorn ITLA women's jean jacket that I'm really hoping to get. <laughs> she is a beautiful painter, and she's done two jackets for me already, personally. Um, so I definitely recommend going to her if anybody wants a painted jacket. And then we also have a handmade cedar swing made by Shane Pemberton. He sent pictures of it as he was building it, so we know he built it from scratch, so that's pretty impressive. It's beautiful. And then we will also be auctioning off an ITLA lifetime membership, uh, one online Jover cover, custom ranch sign, collector's edition of the Longhorns by J. Frank Doby, and a fancy leather cowhide pillow. So... We'll have a lot going on at our um, awards banquet. We have our high point awards that we'll be giving away for the year. I've been keeping track this year of all of the show points from all of the ITLA affiliate shows. Those awards will be given away then. The new president will take over at that point. So you'll be introduced to him. And, yeah, it'll be a good time. We also have two opportunities to um, – if you want to be a, have an opportunity to get something bigger than your maybe your pocketbook book will allow, we have two raffles going on. Um, one of them is for a custom ITLA saddle, um, following the Western theme. And for those, uh, this would be a nice enough saddle you could you know you could you could put as a trophy saddle in your living room, or you could use it every day on your horse. Um, we're also having a uh, bull semen raffle. Um, there'll be some really amazing bulls in there. Diamond Bees putting some in. John Pendleton, Gary Lake, John Moxley, Dale Metz, uh, the Husky Partnership. Um, anyway, there's some really nice bulls in that. There's 10. We limited it to 10 this year. Um, so there's some opportunities that if you're, if you just have a little bit of money to spend, you can still take a chance on winning, winning something big. So there's a lot of opportunities for fun. And even if you don't have cattle, if you just want to come down and watch, uh, there's a lot of things to keep be involved with. So. We're also doing a, um, a really cool thing that we haven't done in the past. We're trying to contribute to the community that we're coming to for our chance show. 
So we're asking people to bring canned goods for a local food center. And so we'll be donating all of those. So And, and thanks for letting us attend their wonderful town. Uh, with all of the meetings happening at 4 o'clock, are there different rooms that those will be situated in? Or where should people, where do they go when they want to attend these meetings? That will be taking place, I believe, in their like, banquet area. Um, so it is at the facility itself. So you'll be able to just walk up the stairs and go into there. Hidden Springs Ranch. Located in central North Carolina, is committed to registered Texas Longhorns. From our high-end breeding stock down to our delicious Longhorn beef sticks, check us out at hslonghorns.com or on Instagram at Hidden Springs Ranch. Hidden Springs Ranch, where they're bred to turn heads. Love what you're hearing? Be sure to check out our pickup truck confessions. It's a video series where we hop in the truck or a rental car and interview a variety of breeders about what drives their passion for their livestock, how they got started in the breed of their choice, marketing tips, and more. And now, back to the podcast. Um, any advice for people that are attending the show, whether it's for parking, unloading, that type of thing? We will have Donnie Taylor and the back crew working there. Um, I'm sure they'll be out there kind of directing people where to go. Um, but we will also be having signs. We'll have signs out there that has arrows and says, you know, cattle unloading this way, parking this way. So hopefully it'll be foolproof, but I'll let you know because I'm the biggest fool there is, I guess. <laughs> I always sounds, miss the signs. <laughs> well, and it sounds like all oh, the kids may, need to make sure they have a list of things that they want to participate in so that when they check in, um, they can let you know everything that they want to do throughout the weekend. Definitely. The showmanship, the um, speech contest, the art contest, the photography contest, um, all of those things will need to be at, need to be signed, sign up at check-in. Oh, and the costume contest too. And then we're also asking people to bring silent auction items. Um, we'll have a table or two set up for um, those to be spread out throughout the week. Anything people would like to donate for that would be greatly appreciated. Is there anything that we haven't talked about that you want to make sure we talk about or any last minute words? Something new that we've done this year that we didn't have it done in the past is uh, the heifer sale will be on hired hand. We're looking forward to the benefit that you guys bring to the table and, and so people can bid comfortably at home. And I'm confident that we have someone, uh, whoever's listening to this and wants to bid, I'm sure we have a trailer going somewhere near you. The ITLA breeders are, are very helpful, and um, um, if we can't get it delivered to your door, we'll have it you know, clo a lot closer than where you are currently. So anyway, I want to appreciate the hired hands' um, help with that. Looking forward yeah. to it. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Thanks for having us this year. I'm excited to come down, and I'm especially excited for Thursday. Halloween is my favorite holiday. So I'm looking forward to seeing all the costumes and the trick or treating and everything else that happens that day. It should be fun. Oh yeah. It's going to be a good time. I know my kids are dressing up with our little calf, so it's going to be pretty cute. <laughs> well, since it's Halloween, are the two of you going to be dressing up as well? That is a surprise. We'll have to wait and find out. Come and, oh. come and join us and you'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't wait to see. That also means I'm a procrastinator. I haven't gotten anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for taking a few minutes out of your day to talk about the ITLA show that's coming up here, and we will see you soon. Thanks so much for having us. I appreciate it. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, Pam.